and go live. Right, I've been to hit the go live button. Howdy, I'm Matt. I assume that we are now going live onto YouTube. Let's go and move uh, the camera across and I'm just gonna quickly flick back. So howdy, I'm Matt. It's telling us that we're live over, over there. Uh, in today's live RC build uh, session, I have a special little treat for you, a model which has been here for a while. It's a little bit of a cutie and frankly, I forgot about it. Uh, so those of you which are on the live version, if you can let me know if the audio is good, that would be very much appreciated. Now, j just to state the obvious, those of you which it's your first time here for a build Saturday, first of all, howdy, I'm Matt, welcome aboard. Uh, the purpose or the goal behind a build Saturday is very simple, is I abuse foam, I have a massive backlog of foam over there which needs to get built and repaired and what we do here together at the workbench you'll see there's a little camera just down there in the bottom left hand corner or your right hand corner uh, and there will be at the workbench we'll be working through uh, well fixing the Bixler to begin with uh, we'll have a chit chat about that in a moment uh, and just keeping you up to date with things which are going on here at the Raglan Nuts Off channel. If you want to sit in the background and just chill out, maybe, hey, maybe you're at work and you're skiving off in the background, or maybe you're picking or something like that, you just want something to listen to in the background, or maybe you're at your workbench as well, repairing your phone from some misadventures a couple of days ago, that's all good. Now, I just want to point out is that on the right-hand side of your screen, there is a live chat going on. Now, if you're watching this live, you may need, need, may need to click the live chat button uh, and you'll be able to join in with uh, the other pilots which are here from literally all around the world, literally from the UK, from the United States, as far as New Zealand, etc., etc. We are a global community of RC nutters. Uh, so with that said, a very good morning to Chris, Harry Haggis, uh, good morning Julian, uh, Anna Danel, uh, Caroline, good morning, Jack, Davey, Atomic, Keith, Stanny and RC Flyer. Uh, good morning. And you'll notice that I'm here saying good morning uh, and RC Flyer is in there saying good evening. So we do have a little bit of a time zone difference here for some of you. Uh, and Sky Hero, good morning as well. You're in the UK. So today's session, we are, like I said, I need to get the Bixler fixed because I really enjoyed doing that. And actually, I, I woke up at two o'clock this morning. And this is where we quickly go off topic. <laughs> I, I got up at two o'clock this morning. Uh, and I edited the Maiden and review video for the Hobby King Bixler. Now, I'll give you I'll give you a spoiler. I absolutely loved the Bixler, and that's why I need to get it fixed, because it's a flying day tomorrow, and I want to smash the nuts out of it. However, I was a little bit... And I, the best word for this is disappointed in a the really poor quality clevises which were included in the kit. Something which I, I feel perhaps is maybe a little bit unacceptable for a model which is now so old. Something which we have unfortunately seen a couple of times previous uh, with Hobby King based models where it gets packed up, shipped and never gets where it goes back and gets revisited. Uh, and unfortunately it's, it's sad and like I said disappointing to see that we've got such a good model with a, such a good name being let down by substandard parts. So yeah, I'll give you a heads up on that one. Genuinely impressed with the model, don't get me wrong. I'm, like I said, I'm here, I, I wanna get it fixed. I need to get it fixed as I'm gluing everything up. Uh, but that was a bit of a downer uh, to, 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 to have to bring that up. Um, so yeah, look out for that episode very shortly uh, when the next couple of days. And uh, so a quick look. Uh, in the chat on there. Oh, Jack's working. Uh, oh, Leah, howdy from Germany. Uh, good tag. I think that's correct. Uh, Jack says, my Z84 tailpring project is actually flying. Happy days. Jack, do post some photos in the uh, Ragnar Nuts or Facebook group and tag me in it because I'd love to see what's going on in there. Uh, so, quick... Stanny says, what did you all think of the iFly airframe that I put in the group yesterday? Uh, Stanny, if you haven't seen this, uh, look up iFly on Instagram or go to the Rag the Nuts Off Facebook group and have a look. Uh, there's a new airframe coming out and it looks like it's made of glass fiber. The other model which iFly came out of was a bit disappointing. Well, put it this way, we'll never see it here on this channel because as you know, we're all self-funded here. So 
I'm not paying a small fortune. And again, don't get me wrong, I'm sure it's worth it, but somebody was putting one up for sale for 300 quid plus in the, in the, in the Facebook group, fully laden out with everything in it, and I still didn't want to touch it. Uh, so their new one uh, reminds me of, it's a, like a little jet one, uh, I'm sure it'll be fantastic, but it's made of glass fiber, so it'll be very fragile, uh, and my, it'll probably be hand built, at least hand finished as well, which will make it much more expensive. So yeah, very, very curious one to say the least. Do check out the Ragnarok or Facebook group uh, for photos on that. Uh, it was a <laughs> it was fugly <laughs> they put on there. Uh, uh, Sky Hero says, don't you just hate it? The Hobby King is out of stock for all the models you buy. Yes, sorry. I, I do make a point, especially ones which come up for sale like we did with the Ranger. I did give you loads of notice. Look, I've, now I've been and bought one. I'll let you know I've been and bought one. And yes, it's on sale as well. So yeah, I picked up that Ranger 1600 uh, for what was it? 57 quid or something like that when it came off on the sale. To be honest, even if it was 70 quid, it'd still be a good buy. But as I'm sure many of you have seen in the previous episode when we did the full review on it, frankly speaking, you're probably better off value of money, value for money wise, uh, going for a kit version and then putting your own components in there because the motor was pretty crap and the ESC somewhat questionable and the surveys weren't much cop either. Uh, good morning, Paul, by the way. So, right, those of you which have just been enjoying us, we're having a coffee here quickly. It's Saturday and it's a build day. So with that said, let's go and get ourselves across to the desktop and we'll carry on the rest of this conversation. Now do remember there is a live chat going on uh, and that's going on on the right hand side of your screen. Do feel free to join in. Of course, those of you on an iPhone or an iPad, for example, you may need to click down in the bottom right hand corner of your screen uh, so you get the live chat to pop up. Of course, any questions uh, which you've got as we go along, please just ask in there. There are uh, a fair number of you on live right now. So if you've got any questions and I miss it, uh, there is enough of us on the live chat uh, to be able to help you out. Now, uh, with that said, I'm here quickly having to fix the Bixler 2. Uh, those of you which have seen the photographs from the carnage from not last Sunday, the Sunday before, uh, you will know <laughs> that we really did give this thing uh, a, a real hot supper. It was in multiple pieces many times on that day. Uh, and what I need to do uh, today, because I really want to take it flying tomorrow, uh, is that I need to get these hot, useless stickers taken off. They're, you remember those cheap transfers which you had as a, as a kid? They're water transfers. That's what this stuff is. And it's just, frankly, a horrible, really poor quality finish on it. Oh! Do you like a little sneak preview? I finished it. It's ready. We made in this tomorrow. I'll put it up on the big camera for you. There we go. Those of you, some of you will recognize this. This is the Vortini. She is ready to go. Uh, she's hit CG. The only thing which I need to do is check the FPV camera to make sure it's not that really bad one. The one bad one which I stuck in the Ranger uh, a couple of weeks back. Uh, and, and I've got a spare lens which I can swap over. That's the only thing which I've got to do left to do on this one. She is ready to go. Uh, she def I can categorically tell you she is not 250 grams. <laughs> Probably a fair amount over that. Uh, the main being because I've laminated it because non-laminated models for me are, are just a waste of time. Because we fly in a field, even on, on the better days where cows have been, uh, and worst case in a, a field of crops where they spray cow poo all over it as, um, uh, to, as fertilizer. So yeah, the Vortini, she is ready uh, and she gets maiden tomorrow. While we're on that topic, uh, my goal this week was to try, well I'll say was, uh, but I failed badly, was to do the Firefly. Uh, as you can see from the camera above, uh, is that I have glued on the motor mount, I have got the servos in place. Uh, I'm here just looking at what I'm doing with the uh, HD camera, so I need to get that hot uh, soldering gun out to mount that down a little bit further as well. And that is unfortunately as far as I've been and got uh, with the build so far. Um, so yeah, the Firefly, I w my, my intention if I'm honest, I, I really wanted this one finished uh, for tomorrow so we can take it out for a flying day etc etc but realistically that's not going to happen with that one 
Um, I, even if I worked on it today, it was, it's just going to take up too much time for me to do it today uh, to be able to get it ready tomorrow. I, I hope you appreciate the honesty with that one. Yeah, so a little bit disappointing on that side. Um, moving on, so that was a little bit of a spoiler. Uh, some of you will have already noticed the uh, photos of the Vortini on the community tab over on YouTube. Now, those of you which didn't, don't know about this uh, is, and I'm sure some of you have already seen that little special video which is on the YouTube channel, uh, it's my personal goal between now and Christmas to create or to publish, need to get that word that correctly, to publish three videos per week. Now, I'm not entirely sure, I'm just here looking for a bid, uh, I'm not entirely sure if I'm included, look, <laughs> I put glue in that on it and it's there flapping around everywhere. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to include uh, these live build sessions uh, within that three videos a week. It, technically, I'm sure it does count, uh, but I've got such a good backlog of videos right now. Uh, let me get that to one side, is that I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to keep to that rule or not. I, I would try and keep to free, uh, but don't be surprised if we end up with more coming out over the next uh, couple of weeks while the uh, ideas are running really rich and really fast. Now, you may be wondering what are you doing, Matt? I may have just trying to inject some hot glue uh, into the wing spar holder in the Bixler uh, because what was happening uh, is that it... The whole wings were bending everywhere uh, on the Bixler, and that's, like I said, I just want to get this one fixed and so I can get the bulk of this stuff off, so I can get again, get, go out and get it flying uh, for tomorrow. Because I literally just 3S, 4S, every compatible battery which I had, I stuck in it and absolutely smashed the nuts out of it in the sky. Uh, I'm sure Mr. Bolton will turn up very shortly uh, and confirm that with you. I, I just didn't hold back. It was just so nice to smash the nuts off a model and just not to care. Genuinely, no care in the world whether I broke it or not. Uh, and it was, it was actually, the, the, I think the best way of summarising that is that I'd stuffed it in, in the middle of the land, in, in the strip somewhere. And Andy was flying around. Andy flew past me. As he flew past me, I just got my big, so I went woof like that. Not meant that I can manage this way. It was just to take the pee as you do. Uh, and the thing is, not and both of course, both both mine broke in two and went into pieces. And Andy's ended up on the floor. Andy just came over and went clunk clunk, pushed the wings back in, and then threw it again. And then just frankly took the pee out of me uh, for trying to even contemplate knocking him out of the sky uh, when his model was laminated and mine was not. So. As I said previously, Andy is a bit of a cheater when it comes to the Bixler uh, because he cheats and put, put laminate, laminate on it. Uh, and all I'm having to do here is use some cheap tape to uh, try and get some of these transfers off. So when I put laminate on it, I get a little tip for you, is that when you go around to laminating the model, uh, is these horrible transfers are just going to, the, the laminate's not going to, because the glue is going to go on top of the transfer, but as you'll see on the camera, the transfers just fall off. I'm really poor, really poor show on the transfers on the fixer. But that said, really good training model. And for those more advanced pilots out there, just relatively cheap and so much fun just to chuck around the sky. Really, really enjoyed it. Anyway, I can carry on doing that on my own time. I am gonna pause because I can see there's quite a bit of your chat going on here. Uh, on the left hand side, so uh, in the live chat. So let me flip back to camera right and go back to your chat. Hey, good morning, Austin. There we go. Uh, good morning, Chris, uh, as well. iForce 2D. So I could have gone there. And oh, Julian, I do feel your pain. I've had a few broken models from all the companies, to be honest. It, it happens. Uh, it's one of the flaws with buying anything, even local, well, unless you go and collect it yourself. Uh, yeah, it's one of the downsides of um, buying from abroad is that it's the distance which it's got to travel. Uh, so have a quick look. Mini win. Oh, right, so Sky Hero, as you, you can probably see in the live chat, has mentioned, how did you get on with the, uh, is, is it Old Dark? I forgot what they're called. So I'll show you the model up on the, here. It's the, 
Uh, it, I just noticed the tiny wing. L, L, that's what put me off. It's LD Arc. Uh, if you haven't seen these, there is a video coming out on these tiny wings. I did publish it in, or we'll share it in the Rag the Nuts or Facebook group. Uh, this little pair of tiny wings, uh, I'm going to set one up his line of sight, one for with iNav, uh, and set it up for FPV. They're absolutely tiny. How big were they? You think they're about 40 summer? Yeah, 43. 430 millimeter wingspan. Tiny little thing. Could be used for a space project later on. Watch the space on that one. Uh, I haven't given it any more attention than what you've seen in the unboxing video already, Sky Hero. Uh, and the, what he's referring to, it came with these really daft little plastic. I'll put them up there on the top camera. It came with these really little daft plastic servo covers. And I don't understand why you would waste the best part of, I don't know, three or four grams on a piece of useless plastic, which is not going to help anything with the model, to be honest. So, yeah, they'll get filed, uh, filed away in the bin. So, yeah, good question as well. As our Drifter says, I can't see you. Just hit refresh on the page uh, and um, it should reload for you. Uh, James says, hi, Matt. First chat comment ever. Have the S800 or S1100, so that's the Harrier, I have built all from your fine work, happy days. Uh, before buying a Nano Talon, Banggood says it's EPP, but I thought it was EPO. Right, so it is EPP, and it's not as dense as other EPP models go. Uh, it is, yeah, that's probably the best way to explain it. It's not as dense, so there's different qualities of foam, uh, well, as you know, there's different types of foam. So you've got EPP, which, sorry, you've got EPO foam, which like the Bixler is made out of. Then you've got EPO foam, which is generally what most wire cut models are made from. Uh, but you also have molded EPP, like the S800 or the Harrier, the S1100, uh, or uh, as the Nano Talon is made out of as well. Now, let me just go and grab the Nano Talon and the reason why I need to go and grab the nano talent is because Matty was out flying it this morning. Now, the one thing which I would absolutely suggest to you uh, to do, James, is laminate your nano talent. The, the nano talent is one of those love-hate models. There are people out there who absolutely hate it, and then there's people like me which absolutely love it. That I don't like any of the other so HD models, in short. And I don't like the Nano, uh, what was it, the Nano Talon GT, or whatever it was, Talon GT. Uh, that other Drac copy was not very good. Very polite version for that, absolute. My way of, the, the way of solving my issue with that model was to stick it in someone else's car boot. That was problem solved. I haven't seen it since. Maybe it might be out on this weekend. Maybe we get around to sticking a rocket in it. I don't know. Anyway, get back to the Nano Talon. I genuinely really, really like it. Definitely, this is one of the exceptions. Definitely go for the plug and pay kit because the motor and prop combo, which is a, what was it, an 1870 with a six by three prop, really good. Genuinely, really, really good. Really low uh, current draw. Uh, you can, with a, an 18650 battery pack, get at least an hour in the sky. I have been out and seen the sunrise with this one this morning. Uh, that's why I had to go and get it, because it was over there on one of the desks uh, out the way. Really, really like it, but massive tip for you. Do laminate it, and also do look out for a video very shortly, uh, because I did mod mine and put servos in the wing. And I can tell you how much I like it, is that you'll see up underneath in there, there's an Eagle Tree Vector. So not only did I spend the time to laminate the model, I've been and put basically a 200 pound flight controller in it and I think it's probably one of the best applications for a flight controller because the flight time in this thing is nuts. Oh, and the climb rate, 60 degrees, full knacker. Stop when you feel it's appropriate. That's all I'm going to say on that one. Genuinely really like the Nano Talon, but big tip for you, laminate it. And if you've never laminated the model before, James, don't panic. Uh, after we've done this live session, uh, click on uh, the Rag the Nuts off on the bottom, go to the YouTube channel, scroll down, uh, and there's a free part series uh, on how to laminate models. Really, really straightforward. Don't be afraid of doing it. Uh, there are just so many benefits to doing it, and I'm not gonna cover all those right now. Just go and check it out, series. It's meant for newbies like I was, 
uh, a while back before I'd even laminated them all. So James, I hope that helps. Uh, I'm sure I've missed a few chats going on there as well. Penguins can fly. Good morning, Matthias. Good morning, Alan. Good morning, Atomic FPV. Good morning as well. Uh, Atomic says, can you fit a pan and tilt on the Bixler? Absolutely you can. There's loads of room on the nose. Uh, a, there's loads of room on the nose. You could put the pan and tilt on the top. This funny canopy, which um, is the newest looking part of the entire model, because uh, I didn't take it with me, I kind of left it at home, uh, is that you could put pan and tilt on that one as well. In fact, that's normally what happens with, say, like an AXN or a Bixler model. You'll use it as a trainer, you'll fill it with hot glue so you make it almost indestructible, and then you'll convert it for FPV, and then use it, you'll put pan and tilt on it, and because you, you it's, you've hit it and you've saved it so many times, it's more than a free model at the end of the day, so yeah, absolutely you can fit pan and tilt on it. Uh, good question, by the way. Let's have a quick look. Uh, oh, Sky Hero says, because the LEDs go under. To be honest, Sky Hero, I'm not gonna bother with the LEDs. Uh, I think I'll just chuck them in my um, uh, box and never use them before. Uh, Alan Jones says, never had an issue with customs from Banggood. Uh, I only ever had one issue with customs with a Banggood and that was a very, very large order. Uh, and since then I've been on and uh, learned from that one to break. Even if I want to buy multiple items, I will break them up into separate item orders. So I'll have, say maybe t if it's quite a few items, I'll break them up to make sure that they come in separate packets so they don't incur uh, the eyes of the customs people. Uh, Jack says the Bixler is just so goddamn ugly. Flying dumpster fire. Did you... <laughs> Jack, I can't disagree with you to be honest. It's not the prettiest model ever created. It has hit a few branches down the ugly tree. But when you chuck it around the sky and you've been to set yours up with the flaps in, to be included, the flaps uh, as ailerons, you can literally throw it around the sky. You wait till you see the maiden video of that one zero holding back, smash the nuts out of it, out of the sky, really enjoy it. And I did that all day long, generally all day long. It was into pieces. Uh, I'm sure some of you saw the photos from two weeks ago on Instagram uh, for the absolute carnage I caused with it. And it's still here now, and it just needs to be saved a little bit. So yeah, might say it's not the, uh, not the prettiest model in the bunch, but for chucking it around the sky, absolutely loved it. Uh, cool beans. RC Flyer said, uh, mad for, uh, sorry, about building a sonic binary. So there's a new model coming out, which is called the, or which it has come out, called the binary. No interest in it at all. Not really my cup of tea. It's the model which you won't be seeing it. And remember, this is a self-funded YouTube channel. So you've seen a Bixler, because I bought that out of my own money. We'll get to that other model in a moment. Again, because I bought it, and I need to be a building. Now, I'm going to flip the cameras back over to the main desk so I can... So we can get the stuff built. That's the point of these live sessions. Because I'm quite easily derailed. Anyway, getting back to my point. Have I put this enough hot glue in this? I think I might have done. Just checking all the way down. Yeah, no, I haven't. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, if you want your uh, hot glue gums to work better, uh, those of you which have got the ones with the XT60 connectors, uh, is run them with 4S. <laughs> and they get really, really hot. Uh, a lot quicker, and also those of you, I'm sure the, those of you which were on last week saw me using the blowtorch to warm the thing up as well, uh, to really make sure that uh, it got hot quick enough. And perhaps I should have put enough hot glue in it in the first place, but uh, it looks like I didn't first time around, so that's why I'm having to come back. I did try doing a few field fixes on it while I was there, but the amount of abuse which I gave it was probably far too much for the model to cope with. So that's one side gone. Ah, yikes, that hot glue's hot. Not that I'm complaining, because it is called hot glue, and we'd all be disappointed if it was cold glue. Let's stuff that in there. There we go. Am I the only one which does this? Just literally. And again, Jack, answer your question earlier about, goodness me, it's ugly. Just imagine how ugly it's going to be by the time I finish doing this high-quality repair on it. Don't care. I just want to get some laminate around it so we can actually uh, take it out. And it's good. I'm going to be able to compete and win in a battle with Andy. So that's the plan, anyway. Right. 
I am just going to quickly rewind. Those of you which have just been and joined us, we're here at the workbench. We're supposed to be doing the model, which we'll have a look at in just a moment. Uh, but we got slightly derailed here this morning, chatting about uh, the Bixler 2 and a couple of other topics. To quickly remind you the purpose of these live sessions held every Saturday morning here, well, UK time at least, uh, is for me and you and everybody else who's on the live chat. You can see that on the right-hand side of your screen. It's to sit back, to relax, Maybe you're building your own model. Maybe you're repairing a model again. If it, your name's Matt uh, and you abuse the phone. Or maybe you just want to help it to drop off to sleep. That's fine. Remember, you can join in with the live chat. And of course, if you're watching the recorded version, any questions or comments, just ask below in the comment section. Uh, good morning, Akoi, as well. Uh, Mathias, and by the way, some of you, I may miss your chat because I can see there's quite a bit going on in there. Uh, so a quick look in the competition for ugly mini talent wins hand down. I just don't mind in the trash yesterday. It was the worst fun money ever. I will stay from wings from now on. Um, if I, I did actually, I, when I first built the mini talent, I did genuinely think it was probably the ugliest thing I've ever built. Uh, and I also agree with you that it is not the prettiest model uh, ever uh, at all. However, flight efficiency. Uh, Chris iForce 2D was on here a few moments ago, uh, and I'm sure he will comment about the flight efficiency of the mini talent. And you've also got to remember, 40 quid, we'll say $50, if that, uh, for a kit, for a model which just works so well, so well. Uh, so I'm, a, I'm, I'm genuinely sorry to hear that the mini talent wasn't your cup of tea. Um, for me... I will always have a mini talent here. My mini talent's over there. Genuinely just enjoy it. In fact, Matthias, what I'm going to do, just for you, Matthias, after we are live, or no, have, have Matthias, have you seen the video? Matthias, nip across to the Facebook group and have a look at the video, which I posted not yesterday, the day before. And just in case you're not on Facebook, what I'll do is down in the video description, I'll put a link to that video. It's the first video where I've ever I've timed cuts to a music track, and that was flying with the mini talent, and that's kind of what we do, and some other stuff every time we go out flying with the mini talents. Genuinely love that model as well. Anyway, I need to get on. Right, Bixler, I will fix that later today because it really needs a little bit more love than what it's going to get here this morning. I'm going to leave that hot glue gun on because uh, we will be needing it in just a moment. Now, excuse me, put my back to you. Oh, by the way, those of you who are in a little bit late, Vortini, ready, made in tomorrow. I'll shameless plug for that one. Right. What we were supposed to be looking at 28 minutes ago. <laughs> or say 25 minutes ago. Uh, this model is called uh, an accumulation of parts by the looks of it. We'll have a look in the thing in a moment. I'm pretty sure it's called the pigeon one. Uh, and I bought it for about $30. It's made out of EPP. It is not and will never be the fastest model I have ever built. It will not probably be, not be a model which I will set up for FPV. It's probably not a model which I will take to the funny farm every other week. However, it's a model which I thought was pretty cute and worth a punt for $30 because it was peanuts in the scheme of things. It was a, remember, I don't go out drinking, so uh, it would, even when I used to go out drinking, spending 50 quid plus in a night was dead easy. Uh, so spending 30 quid or $30 on a bit of foam, really, really cheap. Uh, so we'll take a look at this one. Now, I want to stress from the very beginning, the reason why I bought it was because A, I thought it was cute, and B, it's nice and small, and the intention is for me to be flying it in and around home, okay, so I've got out in front on the lawn, fly it around the front, and to try and get the kids involved, okay, because even if I write it off beyond repair, which is gonna be really hard because it's made of EPP, uh, is that it, it was cheap, and if it gets the kids involved, well, hey, happy days, if we have to fish it out of a tree, really give up you know what i mean right let's go and have a look at it right those two wings don't belong to that model that's that other weird one which i really do need to give it a second look 
Right. This is basically it. It did come a landing gear, which I thought was pretty cute. Never did, never did get round to doing an unboxing video for this one. And uh, today, all I'm going to go and do uh, is just see how much I can get it to to go together and see how much we can get it to fly. Oh, there's one of those stupid motor mates off that twin engine motor EPO model, which didn't even have a battery bay. Absolutely awful. I put my foot in it and just stuck it in the bin. It was an absolute waste of time and money for that. Anyway, progressing. That's, that's what happens. Sometimes models are winners and some of them are losers. Jeez, and that was a loser. That was bad. That wasn't even worth building. And that's saying something. We've had some awful models here. And that one was bad. Right. How does this go to... Oh, hello. No. I might have to go back and have a look at the um, instructions. Because I genuinely don't know how we're supposed to put... Oh, it... ah, there we go. There's a lot of oohs and ahs going on here, isn't there? Oh, by the way, if you haven't done it already, do me a favour. Hit the thumbs up underneath this video. <laughs> Shameless plug. Anyway... Let's get this thing put together. It, it's got an awful motor main on it. I presume that goes, ah, there we go. Like I said, there's a lot of oohs and ahs going on here today. Pop that on there. How do we, well, I'll tell you what, let's, and we're gonna do the wings last because we need to uh, work out what we're gonna do with that. Now, how do we, does that fit? Ah. So they have been included, what feels like, and it is, a 3D, can you see that? It's a little 3D printed part. But I don't think they've printed it right, because it just doesn't, oh, which way around have we got to go do this? Yeah, that way around. It feels like if I force it, I'm gonna break it. And you can also tell it's not the best print in the world, because if that focuses, uh, you can see some holes in the middle. Ah, ah. There's a maha moments going on here. I've just realized why that, can you see there's a hole in the middle of there and then there's a hole on that side. Would that not be for elevator and rudder by any chance? Cause it's a little, what should we call it model? If I push that any harder, that's all gonna fall off. <laughs> oh, how cute is that? So that's supposed to, get, how am I supposed to get that in there? Oh, right. So it's going to be one of those ooh -ahs. I, I genuinely, did I not say that? Yeah, look at that. So that is so cute. And not straight. So, yeah, happy days. I don't know if I want rudder in this one. I will set it up for rudder. Am I going to use it for rudder? I, I, I don't know. Uh, I t what I mean, I'll, I'll do it. I mean, that's the easiest way of doing it. Now, how are we going to work out how this works? Uh, it looks like we got to put two servos down there, and ah, that's why we had this really long, funny wire in the box, so that that goes up into there to get the uh, surfaces on the back. So it goes up the tube, the, up the main spar. Now that causes us an issue around servos. You're gonna have to excuse me a moment, because uh, I'm pretty sure somewhere or another, I had some brand new servos. I had 20 servos turn up here. And I can't find a single one. What on earth have I done with them all? And the reason why I've got 20 of them uh, is because, aha, there we go. Put some nice cheap ones in there. Uh, these are genuine fake Tower Pro SG51Rs. I bought uh, the best part of 20 of them off Banggood a couple of days back. Uh, and the reason why I bought 20 of them is because we have a load of these chuck gliders which have been and arrived and I've got that one set of five turned up and then in the post let me get this the right way around in the post uh, another dozen have turned up as well so we're gonna have absolute carnage with some chuck gliders uh, in a later episode pause in for a moment uh, quickly look in your chat on there as well uh, <laughs> RC flyers, <laughs> uh, good idea for a build Saturday. I don't know if you've seen that in the live chat going on. Uh, RC flyers suggestion, got a good idea for a build Saturday. Just open up one of your boxes. Uh, there's usually the three models in there and just put it together with whatever. I, I do have a box like that, 
there's there's two models in that box and i've got what i was going to do for today's session and then i remembered i had this i, I had this one uh is I need to plug that hot glue is that i do have a model in a carrier bag it got delivered the wife wanted the box to send some to one of her friends or something credit uh so she took all the took the model out stuck it in a carrier bag and it's been hung up on the hook inside for the last couple of weeks genuinely no idea what model it is i know it's a little bit small but i don't even know what it is i haven't got around to having a look so hey ho mm. let's have a quick look uh Julian is raving about his C1 Chaser. Uh, I'm not going to argue with that because it did fly very well. Uh, yes, absolutely. Genuine fakes are a real thing. Uh, let's have a quick look on there. And right, you know, there's some chat going on there. Anyway, progressing on. Need to work out how or if these servos are appropriate for this model or not. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's not. I just, like I said, I just thought it was cute. That's all. Need to see if these servos will actually fit in here. And also which way round, because if it did have instructions, I don't have them anymore. Uh, that's, does that, is that like, ah, uh, aha, uh -huh, there we go. Is that even going to fit in there? Well, that's a bit of an issue. Because I don't think we can fit these servos in here. Oh, that's a bit of a pain. I think I might end up breaking this in a moment. Oh, yeah. The distinctive crack of um, a 3D printed part breaking. <laughs> right. If, oh, does it matter which way around I got this? No, it doesn't matter which way around I've got this. Or does it? No, that can go in over the top, can't it? Yeah, as you can see in the top camera, I'm here trying to work out what on earth is going on here. Um, no, I need it that way round. So that we've got, what do we need it that way round? I'm trying to work it out. Right, if I have to have it that way round, we won't have enough movement for the servos to move. So I'll just cut out some foam and go for the easy life. Sorry, you may be wondering what, what I'm trying to work out here in my head is that I can't readily get that servo in the other way round because the wire's underneath, or can I? There is space, I just think it's too much of a tight fit against the servo. Um, yeah, and I'm going to end up damaging it in short. So that's I, I don't think I'm going to need to put screws in them because it's that much of a tight fit. It's just never going to fall out. So let's get these two bags out of the way. I'll put them in the rubbish pile. Put that one. Put those bits in the box so we know where they are. And uh, if I need to carve out uh, some foam for it to fit, then so be it. I'll have to do that. Right, and let's get this one in here as well. Come on. In you go. Am I the only person which talks to their models as you're building them? I'm, I'm, I'm renowned for it. I, I'm sitting. I'll chat to the dog who Luna's given up. She's gone into her uh, uh, bed for a kip because we. I don't know if you spotted the uh, story which we published on YouTube first thing this morning. Uh, that was halfway through our ten-kilometer walk, uh, which I'm trying to do on a daily basis. We did have a quite a bit of a run in this morning as well, which was good fun. Uh, I really am having to fight with this. I don't know what the recommended servos are, um, but the servos I got are the ones which we will be using in it, uh, whether it likes it or not, in short. So, nothing quite like working with a really, really blunt knife. Anyway, while I'm doing that, let me pause for a moment and have a look at your chat. Uh, can someone share a link to the Small Wings match showed a few moments ago? Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the video to it, Matthias, is actually in the Facebook group. Uh, I published it yesterday evening i'm uh, pretty sure that went up i i know it's had quite a few views because uh i checked on it this morning uh, and there was over 100 views on it so it has gained a bit of interest and it's not even been published on youtube yet so do look out for that one in the very very near future because uh, i it will be next week when it actually goes out live on youtube oh shit! i've broken the survey quality absolute ape at times i tell you Oh, I've really broken it now. Other people would repair that. Fixed. Just to make the point, 
these servos cost me absolute peanuts because I literally bought 20 of them. And if I break one for being an ape, trying to just force it in somewhere, well, so be it. Because I didn't really pay that much money for it and I'm not going to lose any sleep over it because they were so cheap. And if I carry on, I'm going to break a second one and then that would genuinely be annoying. Uh, so I am going to quit little nose to see if I've got the Dremel floating around uh, to see if I can get in there and Dremel it. Uh, if not, I can't see that. So um, it is going to be uh, hard. Well, I know it's 3D printed. So as, as such, I know it's a thermoplastic. Uh, and as you may have guessed, because I know it's a a plastic which um, will will move with heat. Uh, I will get my favourite weapon of all out, uh, and then make it fit. In short, just going to go gently with it to see if it will move out of the way. There we go. Ah, oh, it's not going very well. I'm going to do that on my own time. I think that's probably the best plan. Am I going to bother putting ailerons in this one? I think I am going to put ailerons in this one. So why don't I focus on something which I can impact, which is the addition of some ailerons. Now, this wing does have some dihedral in it, and I don't think that's the best idea of putting ailerons in it. However, I'm going to carry on regardless and probably just complain my socks off later uh, if it isn't that great. Well, I can't complain my socks off later. Uh, because I knew full well, once I find a pin, uh, is that it does have dihedral in it. And if I put uh, what do we call it in it, I might cause myself an issue. So it is what it is. And there we go. Right. Let's go and make our own surfaces. And so that I can screw both of them up, both wings up, ooh, exactly the same <laughs> for both wings. Uh, what I will do is now take that and then... Do I need to yeah, flip it over and do the other one and then I'll make some servos up in the wings. They're not the strongest of, uh, and they're not going to be the strongest of surfaces, that's for sure. But, uh, oh, and that's not going to be the straightest of cuts either. Oh, some might say I should have used a ruler. <laughs> oh dear, did that one come off that side? That was cut so badly. No, that's not that side. That's that side. There we go. That's good enough. Right. And that is definitely going to need some strengthening of some form. I'll choose some up for that later. In the meantime, let's go and get... We need our servo wire. Where's the fuselage? So there's our fuselage. So that sits up in on the top of there. Like so. Quite a good fit there already. So I really want the servo within, because I don't want to be using any extension leads or anything like that. Uh, so I am going to put the servo with about that much movement over. And then what I'm going to do, if you didn't know about doing this, masking tape or blue painter's tape is absolutely brilliant for situations like this. Because you're here trying to work out where you want uh, something to go. Uh, and by using just a little piece of masking tape is that you can then work out where you want it to go. Uh, and I'm going to keep this one really, really simple. I want a bit of extra cable on the end so I'm not faffing around having to get in the soldering iron out or anything like that. Uh, and I have done just been to mark that up on the end. Get that out of the way. Cool beans. Just going to... And I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to put it down flat or anything daft like that. I'm literally just going to cut it straight through the model. Do I need to put it around? If I put... Yeah. All right. I think I will daft play around with it. I take that back. Yeah. I'm going to go that way around, I think, because I can then inset that inside of the model. Right. I am going to go... I'm allowed to change my mind. We're, we, we're, we're modifying a model here. And, and as such, some things don't originally always go to plan. It's okay to fail at doing stuff. Uh, and uh, this might not even work out. So be it. If it doesn't work out, well... At least we tried, and I hope it flies. And if not, we attach a Catherine wheel to it and fly it round. Well, there's a firework going off on it. You kind of get an idea where this is going to go. Uh, my current mentality towards models, because I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. Right. Let's get this cut out and gone in there. Right. Oh, while I think about it, I need to get my phone. 
because I've got a little bit of a spoiler for you. I'm going to give you a heads up on just some, and I genuinely mean this, just some of the episodes which we've got coming up in the next week, maybe two weeks. Because I, I genuinely do have quite a backlog already. Because remember, my personal goal for the next, well now until Christmas, is to post a video, well three videos every week. And to be able to do that, I do require a backlog. Well, that means that some videos which I've got in the back of the net so that I can publish them as and when it comes up or maybe I'm having a lack of inspiration or something like that or maybe I'm not even here, as the case may be. Uh, the goal is always handy to, to have a collection of videos uh, in hand which we can talk about and uh, get out there for you. Now, to give you a heads up, I have quite a collection already. Some of these are, some of these are ready, some of them are not. Uh, give me a moment and I will give you a heads up. Let me quickly go into Google Docs. Uh, rag the nuts off. Right. Ooh, chuck gliders. We, we will be doing those on there. Uh, we have uh, an episode on a wing CG calculator. So something which I covered a long time ago, but I think it's definitely worth going back on that one. Oh, there is a special Funny Farm episode. There's, in fact, I've got three Funny Farm episodes coming out very shortly. Uh, some of them definitely do have rockets in them, including the original rocket episode. Oh, the Brewster, which I didn't do. I, I actually recorded the unboxing of uh, and then never took it out and fit it, or I took it out, made in it, didn't really like it. Uh, and uh, yeah, we've got that one. We've got the unboxing, we've got the maiden for that one to be done. Uh, the Firefly, the original unboxing for the E-Wings uh, Firefly, that one's coming out very short. Well, I need to edit it. Uh, but that's in the list. Oh, we've got an AR900 wing, a model which I re-bought because I thought it was that good. Uh, so we've got that one coming out shortly. Uh, the Mini Q, which is up there. Those of you which have seen it already. The servos have turned up for it. I've just not got around, had the time to build it yet. Uh, we need to finish off this workbench as well. It's doing a good job for now, but it definitely needs those improvements, which I mentioned back in part one. Uh, we need to look at that as well. Oh, there's a special one, what FPV means to me. That'll be a little um, a little bit off uh, on a tangent. Uh, we also have uh, CNC build. So this is where we have, uh, well, I've got an idea. Well, I've, I've already made it, if I'm honest. I've got an idea for something which I'd like to make, and I'm gonna take you through the process from having the idea to actually designing it, to actually making it, to finishing it. So we've got a couple of CNC projects coming on, along. However, just give you a heads up uh, that will, and once I start on that one, we'll go on that little strain for a period of time. Uh, we've got the pair of wings, which we saw earlier, those tiny wings. That one's actually been edited and ready to go. I need to put a cross through that one as well. Uh, the Vortini build, we'll have a quick uh, look at the build of that one and an overview, and of course we got the Maiden for that one as well. Uh, we will be doing a comparison between the Eagle Tree Vector and INAV. Uh, I, it may be no big surprise to many of you uh, that I have kind of come to the conclusion that the Vector is the way forwards uh, for just time. In short, especially for more complex models, it definitely is the way forwards. I, I know it's not as cheap, but when you factor in the total time, we'll, we, we'll be looking at that as well. Uh, and there's a couple of other ones which I don't want to share right now. They will come out in a couple of weeks' time as well. So longer projects which I've been working on, uh, which have required uh, more forward planning, if that makes sense. So yeah, Mini Q, haven't progressed with that one. As you kind of got the idea, I've got a collection of models here which I really do need to get over the line. This one, the little pigeon model being one of them, I think it's quite cute. Uh, I am kind of butchering it and that's okay. We're, we're right to, to, to make our own stamp on these models. This model was not designed to, well, A, be flown by an ape, uh, but also not really designed to have ailerons in it. And that's okay, I'll fix it up. We'll, we'll, we'll make it work to its best of its abilities. Uh, and we will probably put an inappropriate model, a motor on the back, at least a 2206, or well, maybe a 2205, uh, maybe a, a 2300 kV, or if I can find one, a 2600 kV. So it really has got some knacker in it as well. Oh! 
just remembered. Massive, thank you. You know what that is? That, ladies and gents, is a little glider. I'll move that to the big camera. That is a little glider. Rare as hen's teeth at the moment, apparently. Uh, and uh, Mr. Andrew Horseman dropped me one round yesterday, in of all places. Uh, and I'm looking for a special model. Excuse the armpit, but I need to go out there and grab it. Some of you may know this model. It's called Suicide Bunny. It is the world's fastest micro sky hunter. However, on the top of that is a Cobra motor. And where do you think that Cobra motor might be going? <laughs> we are going to be making or going for the world's fastest little glider attempt using a Cobra motor. And remember, I always stop it for us. And you're going to have to excuse the armpit while I get that one back up there out of the way. Yeah, should be fun. Watch this space. It is going to be bonkers. We are going to need some carbon for that one. Probably quite a lot. It will be inappropriately overpropped, inappropriately powered. That should be bloody good fun. Watch the space on that one. That was another project which I've got sat here. Like I said, three videos a week between now and Christmas. I need a list like you've seen already to keep me going because once those ideas start rolling, you never know what's going to happen. Hey ho, I've um, kind of derailed us again. Uh, quickly, Miff and Matt, your chat. Sorry, I've seen that there's been lots of chat going on there uh, in the background. Uh, Jack says the Mini Q caused me to buy a pylon racer, went to the iFlight website to check it out, and still bought the racer. Good lad. Uh, Jack also says the vector is easy, but I would never pay this price for a flight controller. Uh, I don't. I, I do see how much how easy it is. Uh, it is infinitely quicker once you've set up a vector once before. The the time to enjoyment is an awful lot faster uh, compared to I now. And again, I'm not saying it's the perfect solution for every. Uh, scenario budget maybe one um, availability of parts if you heck if you've already got the parts just go for it use what you've got it, it makes kind of like good sense to do that uh, but uh, we will have a, a proper epi episode or run a little mini series uh, on the eagle tree vector because i own what four of them now like we saw with the nano talon over there it's just basically it was it wasn't quick to fit because i had to take the eye nav out of it but once it was in there, once it was set up, once it was configured, it means that I can throw it every single morning and enjoy it and know it's going to come home. And I don't have to worry about updates and things like that. And was my soldering good and things like that? It just works. So we'll have a proper conversation about that. Oh, yeah. Mephias says, oh, I deceived. I don't care. Sorry. was blonde once. Anyway, we were in the middle of butchering this model, weren't we? Let's get back to that. Right, I will be wrapping up uh, in about seven minutes time. So I genuinely do want to get some progress into this one. But all I've managed to do is chop off two parts of the wing, both really badly. Uh, and two, not get this in the wing properly. So let's go and get this in here. And I think the, today's theme will be match probably should have used a ruler for most of these cuts. Uh, but is EPP foam... What we break, we can fix very, very quickly with hot glue because it's only ever intended to be flown at home. Uh, and I'm not gluing that one in just yet. Uh, a, because I haven't put the uh, control horn on the end. And, a, and B, I haven't checked, made, made sure the servo is working properly. So we've got that one in that side. So we will want to do the same on the other side uh, as well. So what's the best way of doing this? I'm going to get a piece of tape. Put the tape roughly where I think it should be. There we go. Get the other servo, which I don't have. Got another one. Like I said, I had a few of these servos here. And arrive. Let's file that over there. Need to sort my bin out today. Uh, now I need to work out where that servo placement is. So I'm going to grab myself a pen. Quickest way is to do it in inches. So we're going to, or there, we'll click that. 
just there. Put that just there. So there's where the back of the servo went. And how far down are we? About half an inch, which is there. So we now need to get this the right way around. Does that look about right? And the answer is about right. Is the accuracy on this one absolutely required? No, of course not. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's only a tiny little one, uh, and I'm sure it will fly really well, regardless of the amount of bodgery which we've done in it. And hot glue will solve all issues with this one. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm almost certain of it. So we'll get that one cutting it around. And I'm going to come back in there with a knife as well. So I tell you what, it's Saturday morning. We're getting out to 10 o'clock. Well, you hear UK time. Uh, before we go, are you out flying this weekend? If so, what are you going to be flying? Let me know in the live chat. Okay, if you're watching the recorded version, let me know down in the comments section uh, underneath this video. Let me know what you're going to be flying. Is it? Do you have something new which you've been aboard? Are you going to be taking out an old trusty? Maybe like a Bixler, for example. Or maybe Julian. We all know that you're going to be taking out your Ranger 1600. Or maybe the C1 Chaser. Or maybe it's a different model. Let me know what you're going to be flying this weekend. For me, personally, I'd love to get this one built. I'm, in fact, I'm going to play. There's two things which I need to do this weekend, uh, build-wise, is I know that I've got the Vortini finished. I am going to... Wherever that's gone. Uh, I do want to get this one finished, just for a laugh. To be frankly honest, there's going to be nothing quite like throwing this one around the sky just for poops and puddles. Uh, just, just for a laugh. Uh, so I'll get this one fixed. And also... I need to get that Bixler laminated. So I've kind of already half taught the, the missus in uh, to laminate in that one for me. Uh, she'll be back later. She's already said yes, but that doesn't always mean we get what we want, does it? So uh, we'll find out on that one shortly. So, so yeah, hopefully we'll get the Bixler laminated. Or should, hopefully she'll give us a hand getting the Bixler uh, laminated. Because I really, genuinely would like to take it with me tomorrow. Because I had so much fun with it. And uh, I want to have some more fun with it this weekend. In fact, jeez, oh, how many batteries? I'm, I, I don't know how... Have I put that wrong? Oh, you yeah, tool. Uh, I, I, I got through so many batteries the other Sunday. Absolutely unreal. The number which I got through. And I normally pack quite a lot of battery uh, when we go. So we can have some decent flying time. Uh, but yeah, just could not believe the amount of battery which we got through. So yeah, today is also going to be a charging day. And that's something else which I'd like to bring in a, in a topic, which I really need to write down, uh, is charging. We'll do a little episode on that one. We'll do a little map proof guide on charging batteries because I have quite a special setup over there. I've got a, a two four-way chargers and another charger so I can be charging nine batteries at any one time because uh, there's nothing quite like just hanging around forever waiting for batteries to charge is so boring and of course if you can do nine at a time really good it really really um does expedite things massively right let me go and just cobble this one together so you get a rough idea what it looks like uh, and what it will look like once we get it ready for the maiden so uh, it does require a little bit more work than what i'm giving it right now uh, and we stuck that up its arse. There we go. It's called the Pigeon, by the way. It was, what, $30 it cost me. And um, I only really bought it because it looked cute. I've bought models for lesser reasons, to be honest. We'll stick a 3S battery up its nose, maybe a 2S. Saying that, if I, if I um, stick a, a nice pokey 2600 KV motor on the front. That should be quite pokey, and I might be able to get away with uh, flying it on 2S, because I've got some little 1000 2S battery packs. Uh, and I there's me playing with it on there. Let me go and swap that over to the main screen. There we go. Camera right. There we go. There it goes. It's going to be a little cutie, isn't it? It's, it's not going to be. It's not going to be fast. It will probably be quite aerobatic, if I'm honest, by the time I finish with it. I might need a bit of extra carbon in it to, to strengthen it up. Although, saying that, it did come with some by the little carbon or glass fibre rods in there, at least. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll overpower it. We'll put a nice pokey motor on the back end of it. 
uh, and it should be something which I can fly around the front and have a laugh with it. I quite like models like that. You can just chuck around and have a complete laugh. That's probably why I like the Pixar uh, the other weekend so much, because it just was a laugh. I just genuinely did not care about it. Something like this, I care equally less about it. But maybe it gets the kids involved. That's happy days. So that's my only goal for it. Anyway, let's get back to your live chat as well. Hmm. <laughs> Drifter said, is a Bixler canard called a Baxler? I don't want to ruin it, if I'm honest. <laughs> I genuinely don't want to ruin it. I just had so much fun with it the other day. Uh, I'm just going to leave it as is. As funny as it would be to turn the wing around and turn it into a canard model. And it would be quite funny to do that. Let, let's be absolutely honest there. I think that's a, it is a good idea. But I think in reality, is that it, I'd ruin quite a good model. Um, maybe we could be smash it around a bit more and see how bad it really does get. Uh, and if it gets to a point where it's almost unsafe, well, depends on, well, we, we, I've got that many tubes of hot glue. Uh, so we, we might save it for a while. Um, yeah, there's, a, there's actually a, t a topic which has just come up in my head, something which I don't want to discuss with you at the moment. Uh, we, we, we may see that later because the yeah it would be fun to go and buy a Bixler just to go and stick the wings on the wrong way round uh, and then fly it like a tool and turn it into a Sir Newton, a canard based model uh, and smash it around the sky but I, I, I frankly I can't warrant spending the 70 quid or whatever it's going to cost me to do that so that, that has made a point that I need to address something else uh, in the very near future so look out for that uh, I, I do need to expedite that. So yeah, because it is a, a limiting factor from me being able to do a project like that. So you might, might have kind of guessed what I'm talking about there. Uh, that will make more sense in the very near future. Uh, so a quick look. Jack says, I plan on bringing my Ranger out with the two meter wings and twin, motor, tw and twin motors. That's nuts. Uh, and Jack, you really must post some photos of that Z84 Boomer in there. Because uh, that is going to be very, very curious to see what you've been and built. Anyway, it's the clock has been struck two minutes past ten here. Uh, I'm going to go and take a break now. I like. I would genuinely. I'm, I'm going to go on and get this thing fixed. Uh, look out for an update on the community tab here for the uh, for the Ragnar That's Off YouTube channel. I will post uh, either maybe a quick story on it uh, or at least a photo to give you an update on its build progress. Uh, it should be pretty fast going here because I'm just going to hot glue it. The only thing which is holding me back right now is trying to wedge those servos up underneath there and do it in, a, in an appropriate manner. Uh, so I'm just going to turn the soldering iron on uh, and melt my way into it to make those servos fit. Harsh, but heck, it works. On that note, it is time for me to wrap up. All I can really say is... Thank you to you for taking the time to join me here uh, and everybody else as well for uh, a live Build Saturday. Remember, we hold these live every Saturday morning. We have a chit chat, we have a coffee, we try and get a model done. We have a look at the build progress of the models. Those of you which maybe have just been enjoined, we have, we've got the Vortini which goes out for its maiden tomorrow. Uh, and uh, we do go off topic from time to time as well for the majority of today's episode, to be honest. But yeah, thank you for joining me here for a chit chat at the workbench. It really is appreciated. So on that note, for myself, Matt, a big thank you to you for joining us. If you're not already subscribed here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button underneath this video. Uh, and also, I just wanna make this point as well. If you've not seen the community tab on YouTube just yet, you're, and again, those of you which have been around here for a while and we're also in the Rag the Nuts on Facebook group, you already know this, but just to make the point here, uh, is that my focus now is to, to get free episodes out uh, per week here on YouTube. And to keep you updated with the things which are happening here on YouTube, the best place for you to find out what is happening uh, with models like this, etc., etc., is on the community tab. So after we finish this live session, click on Rank the Nuts Off uh, underneath this video. Then look out for the community tab. 
uh, and you'll see that there's been a collection of updates and those of you which are using your mobile phone uh, or mobile device, you will get access to stories. Again, a little challenge for me is to post a story at least once per day uh, as well uh, onto YouTube. Now, if you want to get YouTube to notify you of those updates, so if you want to see the uh, latest update on the pigeon or whatever it's called, whatever it's gonna be, uh, or the Vortini, because over because tomorrow is a flying day, and I'm gonna be updating on that community tab. Really important on the YouTube channel, press the bell icon and then choose all so that YouTube notifies you when there is an update uh, going on so that you can stay to update with the build progress, not only for a little bit of fun like this one is, but also some of the other, perhaps maybe, some might say cooler models, uh, like the Vortini, for example, uh, and of course any later updates which come out from the channel. Anyway, massive shameless plug for the community tab uh, on the, on here on the Rag the Nuts Off channel. If you have enjoyed today's live session, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments about anything which we've been discussed here in this live session, remember you can ask in the comments section underneath this video. So on that note, it is time for me to wrap up. Uh, a massive thank you to everybody who's been on here live today and I'll see you again shortly. And remember, next Saturday is also a Build Saturday, and I'll see you again here at the workbench with more phone, because I've got a massive pile of it. I'll make a point. I'm going to turn this around. There we go. I genuinely do have a massive pile of it for us to work through over the next couple of weeks. And some of them I'm picking out and doing separately. There's, there's, there's three bottles in there, which I don't really they parts have got everywhere. So we might even do what, what was it, RC Fire said back at the beginning. We might just get a collection of models and just try and jam them together for poops and puddles. Watch this space. We'll see you again shortly. From myself, Matt, as always, cheerios!